My mission is simple, to make you money. I'm here to level the playing field for all investors. There's always a bull market somewhere, and I promise to help you find it. Mad Money starts now. Hey, I'm Kramer. Welcome to Mad Money. Welcome to Kramerica. Other people make friends. I'm just trying to make a little money. My job, not just to explain, but to educate, teach. So call me at 1-800-743-CBC. We meet Jim Kramer. Look, when I was growing up, we'd always laugh when we heard Wimpy, a cartoon character associated with that bold sailor man Popeye, who would always be willing to pay you Tuesday for a hamburger today. I mean, how desperate was Wimpy that he didn't have the money for a hamburger? Now, all of a sudden, we have millions of wimpies in this country, in part because of higher prices, but also because the economy is weakening right in front of our eyes, in the eyes of Fed Chief Jay Powell, when he spoke today about how he may need to cut rates. Perhaps as soon as September, he threw gasoline on a rally that was already roaring, Dow gaining 99 points, S&P jumping 1.58%, but the Nasdaq pole vaulting 2.64%. The long-awaited rate-cutting cycle may finally be upon us and not a moment too soon because this is the quarter where we discovered that we have a lot of people that don't have the money for hamburger in this country. It's a quarter where we learned that many things are way too expensive and it's mighty hard to pay for them because of interest rate costs. They are too onerous. And I think that's why the Fed really laid the groundwork for a rate cut when it issued its statement today. See, the Fed knows that although job growth is moderate, inflation still hasn't been tamed. But Powell has to pivot because he can't allow the consumer to be priced out of places like McDonald's. Yes, you heard me, McDonald's, that once great bastion of cheap fast food. Remember, the consumer is being priced out largely because of the Fed. We have higher interest rate charges, whether we're talking mortgages, credit card bills, car payments, and Powell can at least make them go back down even if he can't control the price of hamburgers. Hence the coming rate cuts, because if it's already this hard for Wimpy to afford a burger, Imagine what happens when unemployment starts really picking up. And the market can't wait for those rate cuts. It always moves ahead of them, by the way, hence the terrific run we saw, particularly in the beaten down tech sector leading the way. I think the Fed's willing to take action because the consumer's hurting far more than we might have expected even a few months ago. Right at about this time every quarter at the height of the earnings season, I like to look for themes of the reports we've gotten. So far, I've seen one overriding theme that dovetails with the Fed's thinking. It's how the consumers become tight-fisted, frugal, and mistrustful of most companies that have raised prices. Most companies are low to admit it, but they raise prices too far. You roll back prices, you roll back your earnings forecast, you roll back your forecast, guess what? Well, your stock goes lower. But this is the quarter where companies can't afford to not roll back prices without alienating customers. Money managers know which companies have raised prices too much. They aren't waiting for these companies to lower prices. They know the quarters can't be made. So they've taken down the stocks in advance of management's waking up to the consumer's new attitude. If you listen to the McDonald's conference call from earlier in the week, you can tell what's going on in America. As Joe Erlinger, the president of McDonald's USA, said, quote, Our restaurants in upstate New York have been running a local $5 meal deal that was highly successful, performing well with lower income customers and driving overall incremental sales. He goes on to say, by leveraging learnings from within our system, we brought this to life for customers across the U.S. We've seen a lot of enthusiasm, and the number of $5 meal deals sold are above expectations. Trial rates of the deal are highest among lower-income consumers, and sentiment towards the brand around value and affordability has begun to shift positively. Consider Wimpy a piece. But also consider that something amazing has happened here. McDonald's, which was a go-to place for cheap food for decades, seemed to have lost the mantle of affordability. Rather than being a value staple for those who can't afford to eat out elsewhere, Mickey D's has incredibly now become what part of the what Wall Street elite calls the discretionary category. Something that's discretionary is something that's no longer essential, something you can do without. It's right up there with vacations, travels, and hobbies. The fact that this happened, that McDonald's food got so expensive that it could be done without, wasn't something anybody expected, but it's reality that many companies are now fretting about because 29% of the consumer discretionary companies have missed their quarter so far this earnings season. According to Robert Hum, our terrific CNBC markets producer, that's almost double the 16% average miss from recent quarters. That is incredible to me. Kudos to McDonald's for recognizing they had to come up with a cheaper alternative that Wimpy could afford. I wish other companies would follow suit. It is, a, it is now beginning to dawn on other players that they may have a Wimpy problem. Take Diageo, the high-end liquor club that to me seems completely clueless. They make a terrific premium tequila brand called Casamigos. Yeah, the one that Clooney made all that money off of. This brand had what Diageo called extraordinary growth, 
But now, get this, in the latest fiscal year, Casa Amigos saw its organic net sales decline by 22%. So, so, so. I mean, that's breathtaking. It's insane. No wonder the Pennsylvania Liquor Control Board, by the way, which is a terrific place to find prices for liquor, is now featuring a one-liter Casamigos bottle for $33.56, cut in half from the previous price of $67.13. Buy one, get one, Clooney! Welcome to the wimpy world, Diageo. No wonder one of the greatest bargains these days, the $6 margarita of the month at Chili's, is made with Lunazol. Lunazol Blanco tequila, which is cheaper. Chili's is the world's largest seller of margaritas, living proof that you can trade down from Casamigos with no consequence, and America's doing that. Of course, some are fighting this, at least publicly. Starbucks reported last night. It thought a better than feared story, including positive commentary about how Starbucks rewards is giving you a good pairing menu with lower prices than you're used to. But non-members? I don't know, the numbers are weak. I think Whippy's not impressed, so he may not want to become a rewards member. To me, that means Starbucks must do more to entice the dabbler to become the member. And without a cheap jo- cup of joe, I don't think it's going to happen. This story's getting pervasive. Regular viewers know that I've been a great champion of the stock of Chipotle. And I love the food. Until the last few days, the stock's been flagging a bit, in part because we finally found a price that people won't pay for its great meals. On its recent conference call, Jack Hartung, incredible CFO, talked about how the company raised prices in California by 100 basis points. Listen to this, quote, we normally don't see much resistance. We saw resistance to the point where we didn't get the 100 basis points at all, end quote. In other words, put through the price increase didn't work, didn't make more money. Chipotle, meet Wimpy. Now, I know there are plenty of enterprises that are doing quite well, companies like NVIDIA, AMD, Amazon, Meta. There are other companies that are anticipating the rate cuts and buyers are getting ahead of them on Home Depot, Lowe's, the home builders, betting that mortgage rates could plummet. They will. The big question, though, why is Powell waiting to cut rates? Why not today? I mean, the consumer's spoken. Things are too expensive because people aren't doing well enough to afford to buy them, and interest rate charges are too high. The sellers aren't all willing or smart enough to come down in price. Sure, McDonald's realizes it, and there will be other companies following in their footsteps steps in the next few weeks. But the bottom line, the economy is getting worse, not better. And if you're selling things that people can live without, then they'll gladly not pay you Tuesday because they can't afford the hamburger today or next week either. Let's take calls. Let's go to Dan in Washington. Dan. Booyah, Jim. Greetings from the Pacific Northwest, where it's always green and most always raining. That's true. Okay. What's up? Well, about a year and a half ago, I took a pretty good position uh, in a stock that it's steadily gone up and uh, pays a dividend. And what well, with the infrastructure money coming in now and in the future, I'm wondering if, if this it would be better to hold this stock or to be looking for something in a different sector that could perform better. And that stock is Caterpillar. Okay, Caterpillar's an amazing company. We, we made a killing on it for, uh, for the Chapel Trust. It was really great. We left the stock. We probably left it too soon. I do believe, I don't want to play uh, the Russian roulette with the quarter, but it's still an inexpensive stock. It does have a good yield, and I think you have a winner. Uh, maybe take off a little and let the rest run. Let's go to Mark in Florida. Mark. Hey, Jim. How you doing? I've been listening to you since the radio days. Holy cow. Oh, my. That was such a long time ago. Wow. Real money. <laughs> Real money on the radio. Hey, my, What's going on? My, 18, my 18-year-old son has a uh, small clothing company. He uses Shopify. He just initiated a position this week. They're coming out with earnings on the 7th of August. What do you think about that stock? I, I think your kid's got horse sense. I like that stock very, very much. It's come down a lot, and I think it's a really, really good position to be able to take, uh, let's say, to really be able to take advantage of what I think was some price declines that they put in that are now really starting to do much, much better for the company. They, they actually had, they had to spend a little more money, and they didn't want to, but they had to, and it's really paying off. All right, on Mad Money tonight, do rates and REITs go together? I'm taking a look at one formerly hated space to see it's finally time for you to return to the office. Office REITs, that is, then don't touch the dial. I'm going to give you a rundown on the media stocks. I think are winners as we continue in an already heated election season, and there's a small, a mid-sized company that you're really going to like. And UL Solutions has been around since the advent of electricity, but it's only a two-quarters of public company. I have a post-earnings exclusive with what turned out to be an incredibly hot stock. So stay with Kramer.
Don't miss a second of Mad Money. Follow at Jim Cramer on X. Have a question? Tweet Cramer. Hashtag Mad Mentions. Send Jim an email to madmoney at cnbc.com or give us a call at 1-800-743-CNBC. Miss something? Head to madmoney.cnbc.com.